This segment is sponsored by On Center Software. Estimating technology is changing. So with it is the estimator. Here to tell us all about it is Kyle Hammer, the Vice President of Marketing for On Center Software. Kyle, welcome to the show. Hey, Peggy. Thanks for having me. So, Kyle, let's talk about the estimator these days. What's really going on with the estimator? You know, Peggy, for the estimator, there have been tremendous changes in technology as well as workloads over the last five to ten years. In the economic downturn, many estimators found themselves looking for work or overworked to the point where they were leveraging other technologies. Uh, as we came out of the economic downturn and things started to pick up, more and more estimators come on, have come on board to companies. But one of the biggest challenges that they're facing today is, is how to take the intellectual property of the business and pass it on down to the next generation of estimators. So how is that role actually changing? Are they doing different things with the technology? Are they changing their skills? How would you describe that? I would say that the estimators being asked to do more today than they were asked to do 10 years ago. Uh, for a lot of organizations, the estimator was the, the, the magic behind the sale, right? And more and more what we're seeing is, is with the, the skilled labor shortage, estimators are being asked to project manage. They're asked to, uh, to make sure that the estimators are uh, asked to project manage. They're spending more time in the actual details and implementing the work or getting the jobs built post the bid being awarded than they were say 10 years ago. And as this responsibility increases, there are more and more opportunities for errors and um, mistakes or omissions, things that they're missing to creep into their workflow. So because of that, there's a lot of things that estimators can do differently. So what advice would you give today's estimator versus what they did years ago? So I think there's two big things that the estimator today needs to be worried about uh, and, and to think about actually. The first thing that they need to be aware of is that there's another generation of estimator coming. Now that doesn't mean that the estimator today who's been doing this for 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 years, that that knowledge is um, invaluable. But what it means is, is that as we begin transitioning to a younger generation of estimators who not only see the world in a 2D manner, but also see the world in a 3D manner, that there's a lot of intellectual property that the estimators have today that they need to figure out a way to pass along. And so, as they start looking at the systems and tools and techniques that they have, the estimators of today need to begin building systems, processes, and leveraging technology to take that software, or not take that software, but to take their business processes that they have today, to take that intellectual property that they have from, from doing this for you know decades and be able to synthesize it so that somebody can come in without as much experience and still provide a high level of accuracy and still um, have visibility into the areas where the company might carry some risk uh, for another generation. As, so that's the, that's the first piece. The second piece that estimators need to, to be aware of is the, the change of dynamics related to communication with the field. Many, many years ago, it would be the foreman or the super. They would have a stand-up meeting either at the beginning of the week or the beginning of the day. And now the with the advancement of technology, the collaboration is happening in real time. And so as that modifies, the estimators need to be able to be agile in the way that they estimate. So they need to be able to have their information and their data sets and the their plans right in front of them so that they can make modifications quickly, simply, and be able to augment the job as they go so that it doesn't hold up production. Well, it's interesting what you just described is one, we can narrow that skills gap by passing down this years of knowledge, which is one, what you described, and two, the ability to collaborate. So you just described two very powerful weapons or tools that we can share with the estimators that they might not realize that they're able to do that is a powerful thing for the new millennials, right? That is, that is true. I mean, as, as more and more construction companies. I was at a I was at a conference several weeks ago and one of the guys got up and spoke and said, you know, one of the challenges that the difference between the boomers and the millennials is the fact that the boomers were busy working and created the millennials. And so that they're a byproduct of all of the things they put into place. You want to have a better life than me. Don't grow up and do what I did. And now they're looking at the millennials going, what's wrong with you? And, and the reality is, is that millennials just have a different appetite for job 
environment for career growth and plan, as well as technology for um, for getting their job done. I don't think there's a millennial that I've met yet that doesn't want to be successful or doesn't have the same desire for excellence in their work output as maybe a boomer would. The big difference is, is that they understand that there are technologies, there's a way to pass information, there's a way to collaborate that makes it easier for them to get up to speed as opposed to learning through the old hard knocks way. And it's interesting because this mindset then is different from how a millennial thinks to how a boomer thinks and technology is changing and it's probably going to change even faster exponentially from the next generation that comes on the job site with the estimator. Yes, I, I, I think that we will see that. I think what you'll see is, is that as we continue to progress, you'll see a lot more organizations and owners commanding information that goes all the way down into the as built. I mean, the as built used to be drawings that were rolled up, handed over at the end of a job and put over in the corner. But as organizations move from bidding and project management and constructing all the way into now facilities management and paying attention to the details of how something was constructed, the, the information that's there, there's an entire life cycle of how that building or how that project came together that needs to be passed not only for the from one construction company to the next, but then onto the owner so that it can be maintained for over the life of the of the building. Kyle, thank you for being with us. We appreciate your time. Thanks, Peggy. Have a great day. Okay, viewers, that's your innovation and technology for today.